Welcome to Willow Oak Asset Management's Value Hour. I'm Stephen Keel. With me, I have Jeremy Deal from JDP Capital. Jeremy, how are you? I'm great. All right, we're excited about this week's Sunday episode. Afternoon. What we're doing here is five topics, no more than three minutes each, quick hit. Let's see what's going on. Question number one, topic number one. Why is the, the COVID-19 rally hated so much among value investors? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, I don't know, maybe because it, it, it took, it was only like a, I don't know, 23 day, I think it took 23 days for it to go from peak to trough. And, um, you know, last time we had a big crisis, the 2008, 2009 crisis, the financial crisis, I think it took 17 or 18 months for it to hit bottom. And People just kept waiting around. They thought this can't, this can't go. This has to keep going. Um, Buffett didn't buy anything, and all these people follow Buffett. Do you think that has something to do with it? Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe this people, you know, had lived. A lot of managers have lived through, um, lived through the, the financial crisis. Were waiting for a really long, drawn out crisis, um, and this wasn't necessarily a liquidity crisis and um yeah buffett wasn't buying anything and a lot of the famous managers at least uh, value managers i don't think we're buying stuff so um well, what companies are benefiting you know, so we have the issue of if we're value investors or we're taking it from a balance and i don't even know if we are quite honestly what does the term mean even more but if you're looking at it from a balance sheet perspective strong balance sheets and you're looking for a margin of safety in that area those are not the companies that seem to be benefiting right now yeah yeah it seems uh seems like um you know a lot of the company the companies that are benefiting the most are are just growing and growing at the expense of maybe older economy yeah. um companies but i mean there has there was a point where things just got so cheap that as soon as the fed decided to step in uh stocks just had to rally i mean just even old economy businesses i mean Stuff just gets to a point where whether it's you know ten cent dollar or five cent dollar doesn't really make a difference. So, yeah, people just didn't like the f people. Uh, a lot of people didn't catch that. Um, I know. I think we we're a little fast. bit slow here too. Yeah. So, but is it legit? Um, is the skepticism legit? I think it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Um, I, I think it's hard though. To, you, you have to have, kind of have your own matrix, right? I mean. The, if, if price is your only matrix for analyzing a business as a business person, then I think you lose a lot. And there's a lot other, you know, if you're looking at starting a business or looking to make an investment, um, you, you know, price is super important, but it's not the only thing um, that matters. You can't just say, well, give me something cheap enough and I can just ignore the you business. You don't know the inputs, right? So. Yeah, yeah, you have the price. You don't know what earnings are going to be. You don't know what the balance sheet is. is you know, what's book value going to be next year for some of these? Okay, next question. Yeah. Why, what percentage or why have a percentage of stocks in the U.S., think about S&P 500 companies, what percentage have underperformed the rally and why? Um, I think it's about a third, maybe 30% or so um, yeah. have beat the, you know, companies over 50 million market cap. This is a screen I do every now and then. Um, and a uh, year to date, it's it's something around uh, thirty percent of companies over fifty million market cap in the U.S. at least have. So these are not have, just S and P five hundred. Yeah, I, I don't know about S and P five hundred companies. I think that's a good question on a on not on a market cap weighted basis, but on a on a number a number of companies basis. Yeah, it's a good question. But I think um, of companies over fifty million market cap, it's a it's a roughly a third have beat or at or beat the S and P uh, year to date. So, I mean, I think if you look at the S&P, I guess, I think there's an index out there that, uh, you know, there's some sort of ETF you can buy that uh, weights it differently, you know, so it's yeah. uh, it's different. I don't know what that ticker is, but, uh, you know, it seems interesting to, to perhaps look at. But I think there's a general feeling that certain companies are leading the rally, going yeah. back to our previous uh, topic, yeah. certain companies that are maybe don't have a strong balance sheets that are running out of this that are getting being able to take advantage of fed activities and things of that nature are the ones leading the rallies but we still have things in banks other industries that are that are trailing uh and of course some selling from some major investors I and mean, you know buffett just sold uh the, the goldman sachs stake which is yeah what do you is, think about that i i i was kind of i don't know i just i i didn't know really what to what to think about it i mean um 
you know, Buffett's the ultimate ultimate investor, but you know, sometimes I wonder um, what what is he thinking. I, I don't know what he's thinking. Um, yeah, he had 137 billion dollars, right, in cash, and yeah. raising even more cash. Right. I mean, is it because he sees something coming, or or does he really feel like Goldman is just over uh, fully valued? Like he apparently feels about his own stock, or is the dividend not good enough? Comment. Yeah, he made a comment uh, about a couple of weeks ago. Might have been at the annual meeting where that where he said that he would not be surprised if a major bank failed right didn't he make a comment yeah. like that i thought he did yeah, i don't so think he was talking about goldman sachs though no yeah definitely not goldman yeah it was kind of interesting i was you know it, with with all that cash what's the you know i mean i i was thinking at minimum based on his cost basis the dividend he's getting is is pretty attractive um relative to cash so yeah um maybe he sees a lot of downside there i don't know it's um curious Interesting. All right, next question. Yeah, off topic, but I guess this does have to do with Amazon. Amazon. So, so the question is, would you go to a movie theater today? Oh, um, and you're in I would. Keep this in mind. Okay, I'm Amsterdam. in Amsterdam. Are I'm excited about the 007 movie. I don't think it comes out until October, November. But um, James Bond. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go, go dangerous and. Um, Maybe I'll bring a mask or something, but um, yeah. I'm I'm excited about going back to movie theaters. Well, there was this discussion that Amazon, so uh, AMC, you know, was yeah. I don't know, going bankrupt, about to go bankrupt, uh, and there was a rumor that Amazon or or somebody, some pundit was saying Amazon should buy them. Yeah, kind of interesting. Fully integrated. I I think, and it's either that or Disney. Um, I heard Scott Galloway talk about the the the, yeah. the Disney potentially could would would be an interesting buyer. I, it kind of makes sense in a way to be fully integrated um because entertainment or the high-end theaters are at least are or apple, are apple. The way apple i mean if they can't right if apple can get away with it um mm -hmm. because the antitrust stuff but if yeah absolutely it'd be great to own the experience i mean disney already owns the experience when you go to the parks why not own the experience when you go to the movies um high-end movie theaters especially if you're you upgraded theaters, you're, though, would not play so other theaters might not play disney movies yeah, it would be, right. yeah, it'd be interesting. It's going to be hard to have a you know a real adult kind of rated R movie and then uh, show Pinocchio same on the <laughs> on the screen next door. Maybe maybe that's the play though. Maybe it's um, a place for the whole family. You know, send let the the let Disney babysit the kids next door at Pinocchio and you go watch the next. Oh, there you go. There you uh, go. Well, yeah, is it different? Movie. I mean, the last movie I saw was uh, in a theater was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Actually, I saw 1917 also. Both, both loved them both. Yep. But that was in December, something like that. Yep. Uh, so it's funny. That was my last. Uh, 1917 was my last movie theater. Uh, yeah. My last movie. What'd you think? I, you know, I really liked it. I liked Dunkirk better, uh, as far as yeah. you know, live movies. But there's movies like that. that I could watching a video game. I saw IMAX, the IMAX theater. Uh, get a big draft beer and sit and watch an incredible movie like that. That's loud and 3D. I think you yeah, got to watch that for theater. 10 euros. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't think you can recreate that at home. As good as it might be at home, you have a big screen, some people have private rooms for that, but there's something about being in that big cavernous theater, especially when you can have a drink uh, yeah. and, and some food and things with it. Um, well, there's a, there's a theater where I'm from in San Diego that has serves like high-end food. You can eat dinner and a little yeah. light. You watch where you can order a steak dinner or ribs or something and, and it's yeah. it's kind of interesting. You you may you may drip on yourself a little bit, but uh that's what you have in New York. In fact, the last time I was at the theater, I was, I'm in New York here. I was in the theater. I was eating some food. I had a had kind of a normal dinner with it, and uh, of course saw a theater rat run run through. Oh uh, no! Nobody else saw it. <laughs> it escaped JFK and made its way to the movie theater. Oh, nice no. high theater. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be New York without a rat. Yeah. So you know, but that's. Uh, I, I, yeah, that it's kind of an example of okay, which activities are are we going to want to return to when things open up again? Yeah, and it leads to the People next topic. Great. Okay. I mean, they're they're scared. People are scared to death. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe um uh, maybe I'd be the only one in the theater. But um, yeah, I don't I don't think people are going to necessarily uh, be rushing back to the movies. But um, it's so, so I saw this uh, thing yesterday. It's uh, I think this was in San Diego, actually, somewhere in Southern California, where they were trying to open up a bar, outdoor bar area, 
but they still needed to stay six feet away from each other. So this this device that the bar owners bought, it's being developed. So it's essentially an inner tube, a massive inner tube, and it's on a stroller, oh, yeah, like a, oh, yeah. like a push stroller for elderly people. And you put it around your waist and you have the inner tube and everyone else has the inner tube. And if they bump into each other, they're still six feet away. Oh, yeah. But then they can order beer and hang, you know, hang out at the outdoor yeah. bar and the outdoor restaurant, probably set it, you know, have a little thing you can set the drink. Yeah. There. Uh, so I, I, saw a picture, I, I saw a picture of something like that in Germany where they have these, the same kind of tubes, but on their head. I thought maybe that's a game you play after you've had a few drinks, not before you have a few drinks. Well, I think it would turn into this bumper bumper uh, pool or something like this. You, you have a drink or two, and then you accidentally bump into someone, and you spill their drink, and you're trying to fight, you know, your six feet. <laughs> but how does the bartender bring you the drink in the first place? So maybe there's a little conveyor belt that brings no, it to you. No, or a drone. It has to yeah, be a or drone. a drone, right, a drone, like a JD.com drone. Yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 or, or Uber, or Uber, could, or Uber just could deliver it, you know. You see, there are also upsides to, to this uh, social distancing. We have great innovations in uh, outdoor eating and drinking uh, establishments. Okay, next topic. What do we hate about working from home? Oh, uh, internet connection has home? been are you in the office? pretty poor. I'm at home. Yeah, well, okay. I'm at home now, but I, I do go to the office. Um, my girlfriend has been working at home the whole time, and I've been going to the office, so I'm, I feel like a little bit of a rebel. But um, I'm I'm here, like I'm here now. I don't know. The internet connection gets gets kind of yeah. iffy uh, with everybody on it at once, and then you know we're in a European style apartment, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, but yeah, I wish we had more couch space. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll second you on the internet. It becomes unpredictable sometimes at home, especially when things are so busy. I'm in the office right now. I've come in a couple of days a week. The building I'm in is closed, but you know we can we can still come in. I'm the only person here. And uh, it, but the internet at the office is reliable. But sometimes at home, if you're on a video call or even sometimes the phone, uh, yep. you, you just the systems are overloaded. Uh, on the other side, you know, I actually this brings me back to the question back of, with uh, with Buffett in the Berkshire meeting. Uh, you know, I do wonder if he was wearing sweatpants or, or uh, you know, he's got the suit on at the meeting, uh, but then he stands up and he's got like flannel pajamas on or something like that. He's the only person in this cavernous, uh, the, the the big uh, stadium oh, yeah. there. Well, he didn't get. He, he said he hadn't had his hair cut, so um, maybe. Well, join the club. Did you? Yeah, what you do? With well, I yours? finally got mine cut last week or, or early this okay. week. Um, I got this going on. I think yeah. in a few years I'll look like Larry David if we can keep it up. It starts <laughs> losing more on top and have to grow up. Love well, there Larry was a, there was a picture of this famous this famous Vogue editor uh, lady that she was wearing. You know, she's famous for like being the most forward fashion and setting. And it was a picture of her at home in some designer sweatpants. And so <laughs> that was supposed to be kind of the it's okay to wear sweatpants moment for people. So yeah, um, it's okay. What are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, yeah, there's some rhinestones on there or something. <laughs> so, Organic. Right. So that's the upside. I don't know if that's the downside. Then what do we hate about it? I mean, that's what we love oh, about God, it. What do we hate about it? <laughs> um, sometimes, I mean, so so early on, I was getting a lot done at home. And then there was this weird yeah. curve where I never thought it would happen. But I, I think I started drifting a little bit because when I first, in my early career I was I had a home office yeah. um, you remember when we first met many years ago I, I was yeah. working at home and I had a, a bedroom that was uh, that was just an office so it really felt like I was going to the office every day and um, that's not my setup now um, and I think that if I returned to that setup if I had a dedicated you know large room um, then it would be a lot easier but I felt myself drifting kind of moving between especially with Lily here also um, you know, like I said, fighting over couch space and, okay, I'm going to work from the the, ta the dinner table or I'm going to work from the chair or with the balcony. And so I just, it's, it's been a little bit, they get tired of the same space. Um, that's probably the downside. And at the office, there feels like there's, a, there's at least more familiarity. I'm, I'm in work mode um, and I'm there. Plus the coffee's better at work. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's a good point too. But I, I don't feel like uh, we have, yeah, I've got a Keurig in the office, but not at home. So, uh, but I, yeah, I feel like not the Keurig is good coffee or not. So maybe that was not a great yeah. point. But uh, yeah, I feel like in previous times, 
when you had a home office, it was a dedicated space. You knew it was relatively permanent and uh, you had a, a place to go to. And now, because, you know, if you go to the office a couple of days a week or people who are working from home, but will go back to the office at some point, they're just working from their kitchen table. And there's yeah. some downside to that. And you start to lose, you, you lose the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Some, sometimes you either work more yeah. than you intend to, or, or you might, you know, take a break in the middle of the day and last longer than you intended to or something like that. Uh, but yeah, interesting experience. And uh, I wonder how many are, are going to go back. I read something that Facebook and Google, they basically said, at least in New York, people could work from home for the next year and a half until the end of 2021. Yeah, it will be really interesting. Um, that, would you know, articles, there's articles going around, you know, the, the obvious is residential in, in areas that um, like San Francisco, that maybe people feel like they can now go live somewhere where they can actually afford to live. And, and that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Um, it, yeah, I think that's the, that's the upside of this is maybe you get to, um, maybe you get to, to live somewhere that you can afford and not somewhere you feel like you have to live just for a career's sake. But, um, it, it is nice though, to go to the office. I mean, talking to some friends, um, that work for really big companies, it seems like they're being grouped into, you know, kind of group A and B and group A may go back Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday is a clean the office day. Nobody goes. And then group B yeah. Thursday, Friday. And I think that kind of makes sense. So maybe there's a happy medium in the end where you may have to stay in San Francisco, but you only go in a couple of days a week. So maybe you can live a little further outside the city than you did before. Right. But, um, and if I, there, I, there's a lot of companies do that, then the traffic is not as bad as it was anyway uh, for, for everyone else. Well, and, and you know, could you imagine if, if you said, yeah, I, I, you know, high paid 25 year old programmer at Facebook saying, I'm going to go move to r rural Idaho now, but I still want my, you know, 250,000 base and my yeah. stock options. I mean, how long is, uh, how, how long is it, it the, the, the justifiable reason to kind of move to those cities? Um, you know, the, the cost of living is, is, it, is uh justifies the salary but if if you kind of work remotely from somewhere else you're still going to make the same so, amount of money you're saying there's there's positives here for us as investors the sgna uh costs might go down yeah, for some absolutely of these companies. absolutely yeah <laughs> maybe you continue to pay them that but you can cut your your office space yeah, exactly. Spend, so exactly all right last question and this kind of is on that same topic but talking about uber yeah when is uber going to start delivering overpriced hipster cocktails oh wow um God, I feel like Uber or some other service delivers just about anything you could imagine in Amsterdam. Um, do, they, so, do you have Drizzly there? So Drizzly, Drizzly is yes. in uh, New York. I think San Francisco's other. They'll they'll deliver from the liquor store. They'll deliver something within an hour or two, generally. Yeah, yeah. There's something. There's a whole bunch of them here. Um, we normally cook every day, um, pretty healthy, um, but I. I do see people out on the like these delivery services and their bikes. Like I, I, I wouldn't be surprised um, what you can get. I have seen um, my walk home. I, I see small bars and restaurants serving like these uh, cocktails to go, where yeah. they pre-mix the, the ingredients and then you take them or not pre-mix, but you put them in little bags with some instructions or whatever, and and you take them home and um, you have a no, party you don't even have to take them home. I mean, yeah, that's they get where we're at so. So, yeah, New yeah, York is turned into New Orleans, essentially. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised what, what's next. Um, I, I, I wonder how they would deliver it, though, with the, with like the, if you, if you get a hipster cocktail, isn't it supposed to come with like a big, uh, a cube of ice in the middle, like a single cube? Well, that's the where, problem, where right? So, what I've seen is you've got a couple different ways. You have a plastic cup, and then sometimes it's with a straw. And so if you're wearing a mask, how do you get the straw in? There was a joke about, you know, actually having like a hole in the straw, a hole in the mask to put the straw in. I think it was a joke. But then the second ones I've seen are, or the other ones I've seen are, they're in a plastic container and it's good. It's all mixed and everything. And yeah. uh, nobody knows, you know, you walk around in the park and nobody knows it's alcohol. But again, how do you get that, right? How do you get that ice cube in there? It doesn't, doesn't work. Yeah, and no, the ice no. cube, look, I mean, the ice cube adds 30% of the, uh, you can probably, they probably charge 30% more because of oh, the right, uniqueness right. of the ice cube, right? Absolutely. So if you remove the ice cube, then you'd actually have to fill up the cup, which would take yeah, away which from the profitability. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. They would kind of ruin the business model. You'd probably have to charge three right. times as much plus the delivery fee. That's right. So, That's right. <laughs> so. And then do you tip for that? Like, how do you tip if it's takeout alcohol? 
you know, if you're at the restaurant, you're paying a you're paying a decent tip on the cost of the alcohol. Seems seems inflated. Now in these times, I guess yeah. you want to take care of your your restaurant workers. Uh, but well, if that, you're walking out. Yeah, I mean, we, we've ordered from some local restaurants here, um, and it is a little bit strange to order kind of higher-end food to support the local restaurants and have it and pick it up or have it delivered where it's just kind of, you're putting it on your own plate, but you're still paying the same 18 euros uh, yeah. for, for a plate so of something. Yeah. yeah, and you open it up in a, in a plastic container and kind of put it on your own fork. It's almost like, and I still have to clean up and it takes away from the experience and oh, you should uh, deliver the dirty stuff back to the restaurant and then yeah. give them the tip at that point let them put it away yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited about restaurants um opening back up and i guess we're gonna have to make reservations because the capacity is cut in half and it's like sure. you know people have to sit far apart but um yeah i'm excited to get back to to well, business as usual Mark, I think Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, they just uh, donated $800,000 to their eight favorite restaurants, which is a nice thing oh, okay. to do. And, uh, and, you know, there's some business models that in the restaurant side that are really they're learning from from this experience. And some of them need yeah. to do things to survive and need to test things. I think we'll get some real innovation from that, which is which is interesting. The delivery part of it, there are a couple delivery uh, restaurants here that do an excellent job. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a sushi restaurant that I love. The the box that they put the sushi in, it's it's very very well done. And and you know that's the type of thing I I think some of the other restaurants might then begin to follow, where you can get a similar experience at home because of the 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 way it's displayed and the way it's, okay. uh, it's interesting. Well, Steve, what about things like Shake Shack? I read I saw in their quarter that online sales were up 80 or delivery was up 88 percent. I'll probably off a really low base. No, and you're in New York, uh, kind of the base that show. What happens when you what, what does it look like to to order Shake Shack and and have it delivered? How does it how does it come? Is it, are the fries soggy or have they figured out the packaging? I don't know about that, but I'll tell you that there's some there's a Shake Shack in in parks and where they actually yeah. have one there. So I've been going there quite a bit, and they serve they serve wine and beer and and oh. have a you know have the food, and then you can just sit out in the park, right? Oh. Uh, and so with the deliveries themselves, I can see I don't I don't know what the Shake Shack results would be where were. were but I, it seems from personal experience that they've held up fairly well. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the burgers, the burgers are great. You'd think it gets soggy if it took a half an hour to to get there. You think I don't there's, know if some, I could there's some there's some permanent uh, potential market gain mm -hmm. by some of these larger um, restaurant chains that are delivering. I think there's going to be a little bit of a mind shift, or are going to people instantly just rush back Look. to their Mom and pop. There's several Michelin star restaurants here that are doing takeout that you never would have been able to get a table in. I mean, there's a, a restaurant Carbone that I uh, went to about a week ago that I think the wait for a table was a couple months. And we just walked up and got takeout. We, we weren't even planning. We we're just walking by to look at it. We weren't oh, wow. even planning to eat. But because they were open and, and giving takeout, we took it. <laughs> Half an hour later, we had the food. And Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's okay. great. Um, okay, but again, well, the experience is different in those types of restaurants. With the food is still great, but it, it, part of the ambiance and all that is what you're what you're paying for. Uh, so anyway, I think that's that's probably it. I think you know, look, Uber. I think there's some rumors there, right? They were looking to buy Grubhub or made an offer yep. to Grubhub as well. And yeah, it seems I like they're negotiating. Look, there's these delivery services are not great businesses. <laughs> they're not yeah. not businesses you want to invest in. There's uh, a yeah. DoorDash is is the one that the SoftBank funded one. There was a great thing going around. Uh, the, I think Matthew Levine from from Bloomberg uh, shared shared this newsletter thing on it, where uh, there was there's some arbitrage on DoorDash that basically DoorDash DoorDash is is uh, their incentive is to raise revenue to justify mm -hmm. themselves as SoftBank, but every dollar of revenue that they're doing loses an extra thirty cents. So. Mm -hmm. You know, these are not these are not businesses that are, are there out for for fundamental bottom up investors. Uh, it so, does yeah, feel like power to Uber. Uber. But you know, hey, I I think the 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 value I would assume is in the platform of uh, the tech platform um, more than anything, and maybe it maybe it really makes sense to kind of being plugged into Uber or part of a bigger organization, you know, a bigger group. Um, yeah, Uber I, Eats. I, I like Uber Eats. Yeah. Why is Uber yeah. Eats Although I, I think I, I actually read something. We can end on this, but I, I yeah. think I read something as part of this newsletter that it was Uber Eats is the most profitable division of Uber, and they had mm -hmm. uh, they had a uh, three hundred fifty million dollar loss off of one point two billion in revenue or something like that. <laughs> that was the most profitable part. <laughs> well, 
Well, hey, yeah, so they, cool, that could be wrong. We need, but... I, I feel like we, we, we now are going to really expect things to be delivered. So after this is all over, yeah. you'll, if you don't feel like getting off the couch, you'll expect to have Shake Shack delivered. Uh, so I want to maybe deliver, need but with, to deliver with utensils it. and then wait there while I'm eating at my house. <laughs> take it back, take back the trash. Take it back. <laughs> I tip for that. Yeah. Okay, on that different point. Country. Different country. <laughs> great, great talking with you, Jeremy. This is another edition of Thank Value you. Hour for Willow okay. Oak. We appreciate it. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Jerry.